Hey there guys, Laser Game Dev here, and today I want to talk about this. So, um, I keep seeing these pop up on the, the Reddit for Unreal Engine, and they're great. They really are. Um, as if 786 Alley, thank you so much for putting them up. I, I really appreciate them. Um, however, because he's now moving on to the Niagara particle effects, there's a few things in the video that um, he, he's just not quite doing correctly. I'm not sure if he's unaware of some of the stuff you can do to, to fix the problems he's running into, or if it's just like a time restraint and he, you know, he's just doing it quick and easy. But the main one for me is that he's not using the spawn particle effect in the animation. Um, he's not using the anim notifier in the montage due to the fact that there isn't one for Niagara. Okay, which you, you can make one for Niagara, and that's what we're going to primarily do today. Um, but I also figured I'd just cover a few more things we can do with custom anim notifiers in case you wanted to do it a different way. Um, and yeah, I figured instead of just talking with you guys in the comments, which is what I've been doing, why not just actually make a video and show you? So we're going to come into a project I have set up here. I actually have already done it. Um, so we'll just break it down and walk through it one at a time. I usually prefer to make it, but the thing is I've, I've only just done this and, uh, I don't know if I'd be able to recreate it smoothly. So we'll just do it this way. But the, the problem he's running into is he has a, a Niagara emitter and when we come into here, uh, no, not into there, into here. Um, where you can see the, the Niagara ones I've made, um, but you, you don't by default have a notify. The the play particle effect one doesn't allow you to, to pick a Niagara effect. So what we're going to want to do, you're going to want to go into uh, create a basic blueprint and right at the top actually you'll see anim notify and anim notify state. So we're going to make one for each. Uh, I have one for each. Anim notify is just like a, a one-time effect, like an explosion. It's instant and it just goes off. Um, and then anim notify state is like a, a, a length of time where it will start and then after that amount of time it will turn off. Um, and I've I've not actually done notifies this complex before so <laughs> I've had to figure a few things out and it's actually kind of cool uh, the way they do it. I, I had to go into the C++ and have a look and read some comments and um, yeah, it's kind of interesting. Um, but anyway, so this is going to be the Anim Notify for our Niagara effect. So you'll by default, let me just go do this, Anim Notify, select, we'll just create a blank one. You're going to have something like this, complete blank. And what we're going to want to do is you're going to want to go into functions in the top left here, override and receive the notify. This is basically saying the notify has been activated in the animation, right? And we don't have much information here. Um, we have the, the mesh comp, which is the component that the animation is running on. And we have the, some animation information as well. So, we're going to need to add a lot to this, right? Because if we look at the the original one, you can pick the thing, and you've got the location, the rotation, the scale, and there's a lot of stuff going on here. Uh, the only thing I couldn't get to work was you, this has like a cool um, like auto fill. I couldn't figure that out, but anyway, whatever. Um, so yeah, let's get it going. So it's literally just variables. Um, so if we make a, if we do a spawn, um, system, so a particular system is an emitter at location and a Niagara one is spawn system at location. In this case, we want to do it attached because that's just the way it, it, it they, they happen to do it. Um, uh, where is it? Uh, yeah. So you have this attached thing and I thought maybe there's like a, uh, uh, maybe they're doing it two different ways and depending on the branch, blah, blah, blah. But in the end, it's, it's quite simple. Um, and what we're going to do is we're going to pull out of this and we're going to say promote variable. And then you would name that, you know, particle. And then you attach the attach component to the mesh comp. And then this needs to be a variable and this needs to be a variable. 
and this one. And yeah, you, you kind of get the idea of the variables, right? So we're going to the one I had. So these are all the variables I have. I have the particle effect, the bone name, the location, the rotation, and I have a, a Boolean for whether it's attached or not. And we just have these plugged in where they need to be. And the uh, attached to component is plugged into the mesh. Okay, so it's, it's a pretty standard thing so far. Um, and the only thing you need to remember is these all need to have the eye like, lit up um, so you can see them and that means they'll pop up out right here. As you can see, you can just pick one. Uh, just like the the default one, um, and then that's that's pretty much it at that point. It will just work. <laughs> um, we have a branch here for whether it's attached or not. If it is attached, then we're just going to return. If it's not attached, then we're going to detach from component, and we're just going to plug in this into the target. And we want to set the location to. Uh, keep world, that way it won't move in the world, it will stay exactly where it was when you spawned it. And then we're going to return. So that's pretty easy, right? Now, all you do is you come into here and you say, right, okay, I want to add a notify. I just call it Niagara notify. And we can, you know, add, add something here. Um, you see I have this little, like, I, I didn't make any nice fancy particles, sorry. But I have this that like pops up under my feet, and if I want to attach it to, uh, I don't know, my uh, my upper forearm, I can copy the bone names. Just pop that in there. You see now it's spawning out my my arm. Um, yeah. Uh, in this case, it's not attached. So if I was to walk away, it would stay exactly there. It wouldn't move with me. If I have it attached, then uh, it would it's gonna like follow the arm but because it's like a s instant burst you can't really tell but anyway um so that's that's pretty much it it's it's really quite simple you have that custom notify you put the spawn in you give it some variables which you can set inside the the uh the montage and you just return basically uh, or detach if if you want to detach it um where it gets a little bit more complicated is with the the timed particle um the notify state so this one is a little bit more interesting so this is the begin and it's even simpler than the last one so when as we go in we're literally just spawning it it's always got to be attached uh there always has to be a bone name that it's attached to it can be none um but it has to have the bone name so you, you can't un like detach it or anything like that and there's a reason for that in the end. But that that's pretty much it. You just spawn the thing and you tell it what to spawn and where to spawn it and everything. Now, this is where it gets a bit tricky. So I had to read the C++ and it turns out that these notifies can't talk to each other. Um, they're, they're completely independent. So the way they the way they actually do it is they search through uh, the the actor of the mesh, so the owner of the mesh, and then they get all the components based on the, the class that you're looking for, which in this case is Niagara component, and then they look through each one and they try to match that the particle is the same, so the particle system asset needs to be the same as the one that we set previously, the one in here, which is fine because we have that already as a, as a variable, right? Um, so we just say, um, I've set this as a local variable to keep things clean. This this element is actually the Niagara component. It's not the asset that we've set here. So we need to say, once we have the component, get the asset that we're using and then match that to the one that we chose to spawn. If that is true, if they match, then I want you to check one other thing because we might have like, you know, two hands having fiery hands or something and one goes off and one doesn't. You know, you don't want to turn off both. Um, so you say, right, well, are they attached to the same bone? Right, okay, well, that's that's narrowing it down a lot, right? Because if you have, like I said, both your hands are on fire, you only want to turn the left one off. Well, now you can because you're making sure the, the, the bones are the same. So we're getting the attached socket name, and we're going to match that to the bone name that we chose. Once that's true, uh, we take the particle and we just destroy it. Um, and then we return. I was looking into how to do, like, how to, how to leave it, 
Um, I think it's just a matter of doing a, another boolean and t deactivating it, but I, c I couldn't quite get it to work and I wasn't sure why. So unfortunately this kind of insta turns it off and yeah, so I'm not 100% sure on that, but you could always have a look yourself and how to fiddle with it. Um, but yeah, that's that's pretty much it. There's It's, it's not that difficult, really. Um, <laughs> I mean, I say that, but it took me a while to figure these little nuances out. But now I can just show you and it should be quite easy for you. So uh, yeah, I, I really hope that helps. So when if you're making those particles that, um, uh, what was it? As if something... Uh, as if 786 Alley is making. Um, hopefully this will now be a, a nice and neater way for you to um, to spawn them during an animation. Uh, the anim notifies are super, super powerful when it comes to th doing things during an animation. So um, yeah, be sure to make good use of them. Anyway, I hope that helps guys. Uh, sorry I waffle on a bit, but thank you very much and have a good day.